Welcome to our screencasts Apple for Service Providers. In this screencast, I want to show you how you can automate your time budgets controlled by contracts and your billables and invoices also controlled by contracts. Let's say you provide recurring services each month where you get paid for these services, for example, every year. This may apply for hosting contracts or for support contracts. So that you don't need to add all the payment appointments to your calendar or need to add a budget to each project or task every month, contracts will help you to automate this. How to work with budgets in general and how to control your projects and your project's budgets, expenses and revenues, I've shown you in the controlling report and in the controlling screencast it was the previous one. Let's create a new project first. It is the hosting support project for a website that we developed for our customer. As we offer our customer a budget each month, we will set this price mode to budget per month. Initially, we agreed for a budget of three hours and this was prepaid. The customer already paid for this in advance. That means no billable will be created if we track time not more than three hours for this budget. This budget was used to transfer his site to our hosting environment. If the budget is empty, we will charge the customer with a price per hour of 120 euro. The project manager should get a notification if one of these budgets is close to be empty by 90%. Let's save this project. Now we go to our contracts. If there was an activity where we wanted to sell a hosting contract to our customer, we may go to this activity first. Let's just create a new one for demonstration purpose. Scroll down and just save this. We leave a comment here that the order was placed and the quote was accepted. How to work with this CRM system and how to create sales activities and create projects from these activities I've shown in one of the previous screencasts about how to work with the Apple CRM. Today we will not create a new project but a new contract. This contract is for hosting of the website. The customer is already pre-selected. It was taken from the activity that is referenced. The payment period is a period in month when the customer needs to pay. Let's say he only pays once a year. Let's start the contract at the beginning of this month. The last payment date means when did the customer pay the last time. And the next payment date is when he will have to pay last time. These fields are not required as mostly they will be set by Apple automatically, calculated by the start date of the contract and the payment period. So you don't have to care about these dates. You can change them manually if you want. We set the price per month, let's say it's 200 euro. The tax is 19%, the currency is euro. And we can change the payment type. Prepaid means that the customer will pay at the beginning of each payment period. Postpaid means that the customer will have to pay at the end of the payment period. 
we click prepaid. The service category is hosting, that means we can later report how much money we earn in general with our hosting service. As you cannot only track your contracts for your customers, but you can also track your contacts for hosting suppliers, for example, you could set also a hosting category, I mean an expensive expense category for hosting in this case. The cancellation period means how much time before the contract ends and you can set the end date here if it was terminated. How much time in advance before the contract ends a customer needs to cancel this period. For example, two months. If you want to manage different cancellation periods for customers and contractors, then you can change this field. Otherwise, if you leave it empty, it will get the same value as the cancellation period text field. The duration of the contract is how long this contact will last the first time. That means if the customer signs the contract at the beginning of August and we have a duration of 12 months, it will have a duration till the end of July in the next year. That means we have a duration of 12 months. After these 12 months, the contract may repeat automatically. If it repeats automatically, it can repeat by 12 months again. Or you can agree about a new repeating duration that can be added here. The main goal of these contracts is to automate the payments and the invoices. This is done by these payment settings. We already filled them. You can also add and control and automate your budgets in your projects. Let's say we've prepared already a project that we created before. We can also pick another one. For example this one or we can create a new project or a new task where these budgets created by this contract are created. Let's check that we picked the right project that we created before from our activity. Let's search for hosting. It was this one. It is already set to budget per hour and there is one budget that we added manually here. So let's continue with this. It has the ID 181. So let's ensure that we pick the right one. Here we go. And as we can set the payment period in the payment settings, we can also set the budget period. That means if we add one month, every month a new budget is created. We can set the last budget date. That means when the last budget was created at the reference task or at the reference project. And we can set the next budget date. This works similar to the first payment date and the next payment date in our payment automation settings. A budget may expire each month. That means if a customer didn't use the complete budget that you offer him, he cannot take the remaining budget to the next month. Let's say it expires every month. If we have a budget period of one month and an expire period of two months, that means if he didn't consume the whole budget this month, he can take the rest into the next month, but after this it will expire. So let's set it to one. And budget hours means how many hours a customer gets to the reference project or task added each month. Let's say 10 hours. You can leave some notes in the advanced text area. You see the CRM activity that was created to create this contract. You can add some files, maybe the signed contract as a PDF file. And you can save this contract. As you can see, we click 
show end date but didn't fill the end date because the contract was not terminated yet. Remove this flag and save again and you will see your contract. No budget has been created yet. To make this work we need to run the cron job. In general this should be done automatically but we will show you how to do this in a screencast about how to install Apple. So let's run the cron job manually. While running the cron job all contracts will be checked if they need to create new billables and if they need to create new budgets on their reference projects. Once the cron job has been terminated we will view our contract again and see that the budget has been created. Let's click to this budget and to the referencing node. It is our project to create a new hosting for a website and you can see that next to our previously added budget we have a new budget of 10 hours. This budget will be refreshed each month as we added the setting to the contract. On the other side a new billable was created. You can see payment for hosting contract, hosting of website. As we pay in advance, it's a prepaid contract and the payment period is 12 in our contract. We get a quantity of 12 because it is paid for 12 months and a single price of 200. This is in total our price and we can create an invoice from this. Now, whenever you track your time on a task in the hosting project, let's do this one time. Create one task, operation and update. We don't need to set any price mode here, as this task will inherit the price mode from the parent project. And we add the time tracking of 5 hours. Let's see what happened on the project. You see, as the valid date of our 10 hour budget has an end date, this budget will be taken first because budgets that end at a specific and predefined date will be used first so that they will not expire without being used. If we add another time tracking of let's say 7 hours, we will get a notification that this budget is empty and as this time tracking is going to be split It will be added to our 3 hour budget. Now our 10 hour budget for this month is empty and the budget that we got for 3 hours to change the hosting environment has only 1 hour left. In the next month a new budget of 10 hours will be created that you can add time trackings to. This is how you can automate your billables in contracts, in recurring contracts and also your time budgets to your hosting and support projects. Thanks for watching this Apple screencast and see you next time.